Uh, hi everybody, today I'd like to do a practice problem on special relativity and more specifically on time dilation. So here's the problem I have. Uh, a rocket leaves Earth at a speed of three-fifths the speed of light. When the clock on a rocket says one hour has elapsed, the rocket sends a signal back to Earth. And I got three questions based on this problem here. So according to Earth's clock, when was the signal sent back to, back to Earth? Uh, question B says, according to Earth's clock, how long after the rocket left did the signal arrive back to Earth? And the last one is, according to a rocket observer, so someone on the rocket, how long after the rocket left did the signal arrive back on Earth? It's kind of a good problem on time dilation. So try it out for yourself and watch the rest of the video to get the solution. Good luck. So here's what we got. We've got our rocket traveling at three-fifths the speed of light. After it says one hour on the rocket, he sends a signal back to Earth. And the question is, according to Earth's clock now, when was that signal sent? According to the rocket, it was sent one hour after it left. But according to Earth, which one is it? All right, so the key to this problem here is to figure out which one measures the proper time and which one measures the dilated time. Remember that for proper time, there's only one proper time, and there are as many dilated times as you could possibly think of. So to determine which one measures the proper time, you have to imagine now a reference frame attached to the Earth. Uh, maybe let me do it in a different color. Uh, something that'll pop a little bit more. All right, so here's a reference frame attached to the Earth. Okay, and here's a reference frame attached to the rocket. All right, now if you think about it with respect to the rocket, with respect to the rocket, there are two events. There's when the rocket is over here on the left-hand side, and there's the event when uh, the rocket's over here on the right-hand side, a certain distance away. Well, both of these events happen at the same position in its reference frame. Whereas on the Earth, the two events happen at different locations. The start happens here, however, the end happens when the rocket is over here. And with respect to Earth's reference frame, that is some distance away. But with respect to the rocket's reference frame, it's always here at the origin, the way I drew it out. So what that means is that the rocket time is really the proper time. Because both measurements, the start and the end, are made at the same position with respect to the rocket uh, with the respect to the reference frame of the rocket. All right, so all we have left to do now is we know that time measured by Earth is going to be a dilated time. All there's left to do is calculate what our gamma factor is for this uh, speed. And that's always the same thing. It's 1 minus V squared over C squared. So for this guy, it's 1 divided by, this one's actually pretty easy to do, I think. It's 1 minus 3 fifths C over C squared. And don't forget here, you're going to have to square all of these terms over here. All right. So what happens here is that the C values cross out. And what you're left with is you've got to square the 3 fifths. That gives me 9 over 25. So the term in here, since this becomes 9 over 25, this is 25 over 25, you're left with 16 over 25, which gives me 1 over 4 fifths, which means that my gamma factor has to be 5 over 4. All right, that's the gamma factor. So if the proper time now is, we can call this T0, that means that the dilated time, the time measured by Earth, is simply equal to gamma multiplied by the proper time t0. So what we get here is 5 over 4 multiplied by our proper time, which is 1 hour. So that is, well, 1 hour and a quarter of an hour. I can call that, well, whatever, 5 over 4 hours. Or if you wanted to, you could do it in minutes, 75 minutes. All right, if this is 60 minutes... Um, that'll be 75 minutes. You can keep it in hours. I think that's okay for this problem. All right, great job. Okay, so here's question B. It says, now according to Earth's clock, how long after the rocket left did the signal arrive? Well, we just calculated the amount of time as measured by Earth that 
an observer on Earth says, well, that's when the signal was sent. And now we're going to call that T1. This here is 5 over 4. And now, while we know we have a signal that travels from the rocket to the Earth, and according to someone on Earth, that signal travels at the speed of light. That's true for any observer in any reference frame. So really what we have to do is we have to calculate how long does it take light to travel this distance. We're going to call this time 2. And again, it's as measured by someone on Earth. So you really have to know what is the distance here as measured by someone on Earth. And all of this comes down to using kind of a simple equation here. If there's no acceleration, the speed is distance over time. So to get the distance as measured by Earth, we need to know simply speed times the time. And we know the rocket was, was traveling at three-fifths the speed of light. Therefore, the distance as measured by someone on Earth is simply going to be the speed, three-fifths, the speed of light, multiplied by the time as measured by someone on Earth. Well, that is what we just calculated in the first part. That's 5 over 4 times 1 hour. I'm going to keep the units like this. You'll see in a minute. It doesn't matter. You can cross out those 5s. And what you're left with here is 3 fourths C times 1 hour. It seems like a weird, dis uh, weird unit here for distance, but let's not worry about it. Because really all we're interested in is what is this time to? How long now does it take light to travel this distance? So if you're looking for the time for light to travel, I'm going to call this T2. All you simply need to know is what is the distance divided by the speed. And since we're looking at light, well, we know the speed is C. So the distance now is going to be distance as measured by Earth and divided by the speed of light. So here you get 3 fourths C times 1 hour divided by C. Again, the C's here cross out, which is why I didn't want to bother kind of simplifying all the units. And at the end here, you're left with 3 quarters of an hour. So that means that the total time now is simply T1 plus T2. The amount of time as measured by Earth that someone on Earth says, well, that's when the signal was sent, plus the amount of time it takes for that signal to get back to Earth. All right, so you get uh, 5 over 4 hours plus 3 quarters of an hour. You get 8 over 4, which gives me 2 hours. So that's the total time as measured by Earth from when the rocket left to when the signal got back to Earth. All right, let's have a look at our next problem. In problem C, it says now, according to the rocket observer, so we have to be careful. Everything now must be done in the rocket's frame. How long after the rocket left did the signal arrive back on Earth? Well, according to the rocket, we know that the signal was sent after a time of one hour. For the Earth, it was 5 over 4 hours, but according to the rocket, it's 1 hour. And also, according to the rocket, Earth is initially how far away? What is this distance here as measured by the rocket? Again, we have the speed as distance over time. Therefore, according to the rocket, the rocket sees the Earth moving to the left here at some speed of 3 fifths C. So the distance here, the initial distance when that signal was sent, um, is simply going to be the speed. 3 fifths multiplied by the time is 1 hour. Don't forget my C. So here at the end we get 3 fifths C times 1 hour. So that's this initial distance when that signal was sent. Now you got to think about it. When this uh, signal here travels at speed C, uh, the Earth is still moving, <laughs> right? So the Earth's initially at this distance. However, even though the speed of light is faster than that of Earth, as it travels this distance, the Earth is still moving this way. So we need to set up a condition when the signal and the Earth are going to be at the same position. So for that, well, let's just do the speed or the position of the signal as a function of time. That's easy. Uh, the position of the signal as a function of time is simply the speed of the signal, which is C, multiplied by time. And what is the position of the Earth with respect to time? Well, it's at some initial position, and that's the distance dr, as measured by the rocket, plus, well, whatever distance is travel when the signal is traveling. So this is going to be 3 fifths, because the Earth is moving uh, to the left at 3 fifths the speed of light with respect to somebody on the rocket. 
and multiplied by the time. So have a look at this expression. Make sure you understand it. This guy here is for the signal position. And this here is the Earth's position. This here was my initial position. And this is this extra little bit that you have to add for this case. So let's have a look at what we know here. We could substitute our value for dr. Let me just move everything over here. So dr was 3 fifths c times 1 hour. That was just a constant term. Plus, again, this here is 3 fifths c times t. And this is c times t. Let me group all these terms together on the right-hand side. So you get c times t minus 3 fifths c times t. Notice you have the speed of light in all the terms. We can actually just get rid of that. So what are you left with? On the right-hand side here, we're left with t minus 3 fifths. That gives us 2 fifths. So that means you also have a 5 here on both sides. You can get rid of that term. And what you're left with at the time, at least this time to go back, right, just to catch up to it, is going to be you have a 3 here, you have a 2. You have 3 over 2 uh, multiplied by 1 hour. So that's 1.5 hours, and this is really the time too. This is the time for the signal to get all the way to Earth. So at the end, the total time is simply T1 plus T2. T1 was one hour. That's when the signal was sent. Plus 1.5 hours. That's how long it took for the signal to get all the way back to Earth. So the total time is simply 2.5 hours. Notice that this time is bigger than the time as measured by Earth. Earth said it only took two hours for the signal to get back. Someone on the rocket will say that the time for the signal to get back to Earth is 2.5 hours. So this is one way to solve this problem. Uh, the other thing you could have kind of realized here is that if you're an observer on Earth, well, imagine where both of these events took place. So you had the rocket that left you started your clock, and then you have the signal that comes back to the same position. Actually, for this entire trip, for this entire, for both of these events, they happen at the same position in Earth's reference frame. That means that this here is actually the proper time. That would mean that any other time must be a dilated time. And we've already calculated the gamma factor for this one. The gamma factor, if you remember from last time, was simply 5 over 4. So if you know the proper time here, we could have immediately simply calculated what the dilated time is, and that would be the rocket's time, because both of these events on the rocket happen at different position in the rocket's reference frame. When the signal was sent, it was here. When the signal arrived back to Earth, it was over here in the rocket's reference frame. So that means that the rocket must measure a dilated time for both of these events. So you have gamma simply times the proper time, which is T0. Our gamma factor is five over four. And multiplied by two hours gives us what? Five over two, five over two is 2.5 hours. Notice we got the exact same answer simply by using our time dilation equation. So this problem is a little bit harder, but think about it. Make sure you understand kind of both ways and why you're able to use uh, these equations.